If you look at how quickly the human race as a whole have evolved, I think it's safe to say we've done a pretty good job. Considering how it wasn't too long ago that mobile phones didn't even exist and now it's uncommon to find someone without one, we've really improved the quality of life rather quickly. Now that's not to say that having a phone in your pocket is the end all be all, but more so the idea of being able to bank anywhere from an app on your phone or having your favorite food place deliver thanks to an app in which before that was never an option. Although some may feel less connected to others when they're connected into the web, it goes without saying that at the rate we've learned to advance our tech and even learn from it, well, the humans are doing all right. And it seems as the years go on, we're advancing at a rapid rate with things happening much quicker than initially thought. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking how will humans evolve next? Smash that like button and let's get into this one. Cause folks, let me tell you, it is a spicy one. As I've said before doing videos like these, it'll be very interesting looking back and seeing how right or potentially wrong I was when looking toward the future. Am I giving the human race too much credit believing they'll continue to pull off some truly spectacular things? Maybe, cause as we know, there are a lot of stupid people out there. However, if you go back to say, I don't know, 1975, and you told the people there about YouTube, well, they would probably say there's a better chance of the moon landing being real. On a more serious note, it seems there are numerous ways humans can continue to evolve. Which ways we continue to trend toward truly depends on general interest, funds, and potential breakthroughs that those working on said projects potentially reach. For example, the idea of a space station on Mars or a brain chip isn't as far-fetched as one may have thought even a decade ago. To no surprise, we're going to look deeper into both of these ideas and plenty more as we get through the video. For starters though, let's talk about space. Now not too long ago, I covered a video about Mars and a potential of a permanent international space station becoming a reality in the distant future. There's also been plenty of talk of space travel in general. As we know, Elon Musk has also raised the idea of living on Mars and in recent months, we've learned more about our neighboring planets than we have in decades of research. Safe to say it seems we're rapidly improving our knowledge of the everlasting universe and space in general. So without a doubt, I think it's quite obvious that humans are likely going to continue evolving not only their understanding of space, but space travel as well. Whether that means recreational trips that are quite literally out of this world or potentially having the ability to create a space station on Mars, I think the idea of both space travel becoming a much more common thing, even for everyday people, as well as a mini society of sorts on Mars, is actually in the future of the human race. Now, does that mean I'll see it in my lifetime? Most likely not, but that doesn't mean hundreds of years from now it's not possible. I mean, with all due respect, if you were to compare things now to how they were even 300 years ago, in the late 1700s, early 1800s, I could promise you the internet wasn't even, forget a thought, it wasn't even a dream. It wasn't even a, it wasn't even a, it wasn't even a, a, a comprehension. It wasn't even a perception of anything. <laughs> but maybe it's not space travel or the colonization of Mars that comes first, but instead a new form of technology even greater than our cell phones. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the one and only Neuralink. Designed by the Doge father himself, Papa Elon will not only help drastically improve your life, but will also give you more control than ever before. Or so we think. The idea of being able to control certain tech with my brain is very enticing, but at the same time, I feel it quite literally makes me less of a human being. Granted, people say kids nowadays are addicted to their phones or do everything digitally, but I think that goes for the majority of the world. As a society, we've continued to adapt to technology and the new generations are being born not knowing any different, and we can't blame them for that. I mean, we're kind of literally giving them an iPad from birth. And there's obviously a reason this has happened. We clearly feel technology, more specifically certain tech, such as smartphones, tablets, and so on, have significantly improved our lives. So who's to say decades down the line that the idea of being more in tune with your technology, literally, wouldn't be a good thing? I am, that's who, me. Apparently, a side to the coin that no one is discussing is the idea that things can be hacked. Computers, garage doors, cars, cell phones, anything with a signal can be hacked. And you bet your bottom dollar that if you get a chip implanted in your brain, someone somewhere will have the ability to hack into it. Oh boy. Now obviously hacking into someone's brain, literally, wouldn't be such an easy task. But it would be possible, and there would be people out there in the world capable of doing such things. Which begs the question, is this really a direction we, as a society and race, want to go in? If you thought manipulation was bad before through the means of physical or verbal contact, imagine being controlled remotely and having no say in what you do or don't do. That's what it would be like to have your brain hacked if you were hooked up to the Neuralink system. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm saying it's a definite possibility that we need to all be aware of. 
What if Elon decides he wants to rule all the human robots, makes the universe's official currency Doge, and forces everyone to drive a Tesla? Well, actually, you know, when I think about it like that, it really wouldn't be so bad. And speaking of cryptocurrency, we need to touch on that as well, given that it's exploded in popularity yet again. This time, though, it appears it's here to stay. Back in 2013, when Bitcoin appeared to explode, many were unsure of what this new cryptocurrency thing was. Some people were very into it, others were very against it, and some paid no mind to it. Then it crashed, those who made money were laughing, those who didn't invest said I told you so, and everyone else was doing the Harlem Shake. Fast forward to 2021, and I know more cryptocurrencies than I do languages. I only speak English, so that's not saying much. That being said, it seems cryptocurrency is here to stay for good, with numerous currencies hitting all-time highs month after month. Naturally, there are dips, as what goes up must come down, but overall it seems quite lucrative. Some still aren't sold on it, while others know it's the future. A handful of those against the idea cite the energy and resources it costs to mine a single Bitcoin, which has been a topic of controversy for some time. I'm sure they said the same thing about cars burning gasoline, and as we can see, humans learn to adapt over time. Like, sorta. We got like hybrids, electric cars, you guys get what I'm saying. For all I know, deep sea travel may be next in line for humans, although it's much more costly and potentially more dangerous than space travel. All in all, as you guys can clearly see, the human race is destined for great things, or so I hope. Ultimately, we gotta wait and see how it all pans out, but hey, like I said before, it'll be very interesting to check back on this video and see how accurate or inaccurate I was. Very fun. Looking forward to watching this video when I have kids. You know, like, I don't know, when they're like eight or nine, and I'm like, hey, look, it's dad. This is what he used to do. Hopefully, I'm still doing this. I, you know, I, I like entertaining, so hopefully, hopefully I can do the rest of my life. <laughs> For now, just let us some comments from the video, what could cause a civil war in 2021? William Miles said, I'm shocked that it hasn't happened already. I think, no, it hasn't already happened is how you said it, whatever. You get the point. I, so, hmm, it kind of is happening though. Like, if you look at certain places in the world, uh, I don't know too much about the situation in Colombia, but from what I'm seeing online, it looks like the people are rebelling against the government. They imposed like I think an 18% tax or maybe it's 13%. I don't I don't know the exact details, but apparently they 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 tried to pass or they did pass a law for like a crazy countrywide tax on everything. So the people are rebelling and it's a whole it's really like it's bad. James 003 said, "Stock up your ammunition, folks. The show is about to begin." Yikes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I yeah, I saw some people were like for guns, some people were against guns. I mean, all I'm gonna say is do what you gotta do to feel like you're protecting yourself and your family. That's all I'm gonna say. Gerardo Aguilera said, I'm not joking. I'm also wearing a Philadelphia Eagles hoodie while watching this video. Let's go, boy. It's because they're the best team. The Cowboys suck. The Washington football team sucks. The Giants suck. We had a great draft. I know people weren't too happy about it, but we got, we got that star wide receiver. We got uh, Jalen, who's now gonna, we got, we got Hertz and Rager, who are gonna just explode this year. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a big year, guys. Mark my words. All right, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Jerry Pepper Bronstein, and we'll see you soon. Bye.